Important Concepts for Acids and Bases. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few basic but very important co um, concepts regarding acids and bases. And a good understanding of these concepts will actually help you a lot as you uh, work through the other material in this chapter. So the first one we're going to talk about is strong versus weak acids. And what I'd like you to do is take a look at the two solutions shown below, each of them are in a different flask, and think about what's different about them and what is similar. Okay, so take a look, you can see the key here, so this, the yellow dots are hydronium ion, and the hashed blue dots are chloride anion, and then looking over here, you have some molecules that are still stuck together, you have fluoride anion, and then you have hydronium. So take a look at that, and then we'll discuss it. All right, now, what's different about these two is that the hydronium and chloride shown here, notice how all of the acid is dissociated. So this is actually hydrochloric acid. So the H plus is stuck to a water molecule forming hydronium. So you could also think of this as H plus. And then chloride anion is the anion for hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And so what that means is that the acid dissolves completely into ions. So 100% of them break up separately into ions. That is a strong acid. Now, the, this beaker on the right is a little bit different. So we actually have hydrofluoric acid in here. And notice how some of them are still associated. So in other words, they're not dissociated. They're still stuck together. Um, and one of them is dissociated. So here is the fluoride anion, okay? And then here's hydronium, so there's the H plus stuck to that water molecule. Now, when the acid does not completely dissolve into solution, we call that a weak acid. So a strong acid dissociates completely, and a weak acid only partially dissociates. So let's look at the equations for these. Okay, so we have hydrochloric acid, we dissolve it in water, it's going to dissociate completely. Notice this single-headed arrow. We're going to get hydronium or H+, plus if, and we have chloride anion. All right, so that's strong acid with the single-headed arrow. Now, hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. So notice that we basically write out the same equation, except for we've substituted hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so everything there is the same pattern, but Notice that we have a double-headed arrow here, and that is an equilibrium arrow, and it's showing that hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid only partially dissociates into ions. So a single-headed arrow is going to give us full dissociation, and the double-headed arrow is going to give us partial dissociation. Now, we can talk about bases in exactly the same way. Strong bases dissolve completely into ions in solution. So if we take sodium hydroxide, it's an aqueous solution. We're going to get sodium cations and hydroxide anions, and notice the single-headed arrow there. Now, weak bases only partially dissolve into ions in solution. So that's directly analogous to the weak acids. So an example of that would be magnesium hydroxide. We dissolve that into solution, and it's only going to partially dissociate, okay? So we're going to have magnesium 2 plus and hydroxide ions. And ammonia is another weak base, okay? And we're going to get ammonium cations and hydroxide anions. And notice the double-headed arrow in both cases. These are both weak bases. Now, it gets a little bit hairier. Okay, but it's not too bad if you think about it. We're going to talk about conjugate acid-base pairs. Now, an acid is going to donate a proton to water. Okay, so this H plus is going to stick to this water molecule, and we're going to get hydronium right here. Okay, now when that happens, we're going to form something called a conjugate base. And you can identify the conjugate base. So here's your acid. And basically, the conjugate base is just whatever's left over after you take that H plus off, okay? So we're going to take an H plus off. That's going to leave that extra electron with chloride, 
and here is the conjugate base, okay? So chloride anion. If we do the same thing for hydrofluoric acid, that H plus is going to react with water or, you know, it's going to associate with water, shall we say, and form hydronium ion. And the conjugate base is whatever is left over after we remove the H plus. So that's going to be fluoride anion. That's the conjugate base for HF. So these guys are a pair. So we have an acid and a conjugate base. And we have an acid and a conjugate base. All right, so we can do the same thing with bases. So let's take our base ammonia, okay? We're gonna react it in water. We're gonna get ammonium, and so basically notice this is the base with an extra H plus, okay? So that's our conjugate acid now. So this would act as an acid in solution, and then we're gonna form hydroxide. So the conjugate acid for a base is going to have an extra H plus added. So let's just summarize that. Here we have an acid. An acid is always going to have a conjugate base on the product side, and it's going to be whatever the acid is without the H plus, whatever's left over. When we look at bases, then we're going to have the base, and we're going to have an extra H plus on whatever that base was and that's the conjugate acid. All right, and finally, neutralization reactions. So when we have an acid and a base reacting, they're gonna form water and a quote-unquote salt, okay? So notice this is sodium chloride, so that's table salt, and that's usually what we think of it as a salt. But in chemistry, a salt can just be an, any ionic compound. So we're gonna have an acid and a base, we're going to form water with the hydroxide and the H plus, the proton part of this, and then whatever's left over, the sodium and the chloride, that's going to be our salt. Okay, so same with uh, hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid and ammonia. We're going to have, it's actually a little bit more complicated, so I'll just leave that to the side. But what we're going to get is water, and then we're going to get our salt, which is going to be ammonium. Okay, so with the extra H plus associated with that uh, fluoride anion, and that's going to be our salt, ammonium fluoride. Okay, finally, I, was, I forgot about the pH scale. So the pH scale basically ranks the acidity of a substance, or it, ba it basically indicates the acidity of a substance. And so what you're going to do is you're going to measure the concentration of hydronium ion, and then you're going to take the negative log of it. So negative log, this log function is on your calculator, and that hydronium ion concentration. And this quantity is equal to pH. So you can just calculate that. The scale goes from 0 and 14 to 14 when we're in aqueous solution at 25 degrees C. And 7, pH of 7 is neutral. If the pH is lower than 7, it's going to be an acidic solution. If the pH is higher than 7, it's going to be a basic solution. So basically, the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. The higher the pH, the more basic the solution. And remember, you can always calculate it, negative log H3O+, plus, which is hydronium, or you could just put H plus in there, okay, to make it simpler also. Okay, so what should you be able to do with all of this? You should be able to recognize acids and bases. You should be able to write out the chemical reaction for the dissolution of each of those in water. So put the acid in water, you're going to get hydronium, and you're going to get the conjugate base for the acid. Or if you put the base in solution, and it's going to be in solution with water, you're going to get hydroxide and then the conjugate acid. You should be able to identify strong and weak acids and strong and weak bases. Now, there is a list of strong acids and bases that you should memorize, and it'll be in your uh, textbook. It'll also be in your learning management system, in our case, Canvas. You should also be able to identify conjugate acid-base pairs and write the chemical reaction for an acid reacting with a base, which is a neutralization reaction.